Uh, yep, hello. Thank you for skipping breakfast and coming, uh, coming to see our talk. Uh, we're going to talk about something we currently call vertical sync, so how uh, the Verge and how vertical trees are going to improve uh, the syncing experience, which, uh, as most of you know, is pretty bad in Ethereum. Uh, I'm Guillaume Indin from, from the EF, a member of the, the GEF team, and uh, this is Tanishk from Nethermind. We're both working on, on Verkle. By the way, this is uh, Tanishk's first presentation, like public presentation, so uh, please uh, welcome him. Thank you. And in order to immediately rain on that parade, uh, I want to remind you that the state of Ethereum is growing. And uh, today, realistically, if you want to run a node, you need a, ter a two terabyte uh, disk. This comes with a lot of problems. First, uh, the database itself that the data is stored in will get slower and slower. Um, but it also is an annoyance for many other applications, like if you need to prove some state, the proofs get bigger, uh, and of course, um, the sync also gets longer. Uh, so let's look at the status quo. Right now, it's a very simplified uh, presentation of how the current uh, state-of-the-art sync works, which is called Snap Sync. Uh, imagine you have this tree, um, and you need to start a new node that has, like you start a new node, the node has no state whatsoever. It's completely empty. So you ask a node to start giving you some data. You choose a, a block height uh, and ask the nodes around you to send you some data. The problem is the state is not only growing, but it's also getting updated. And we can't keep every single revision of the state. Um, I mean, we can. It's called an archive node, but no one runs that because it's extremely, uh, it's extremely uh, heavy. So at some point, uh, that, that block height, uh, which is called the, the pivot block, uh, you will not be able to get the data from it. So if you continue downloading, you have to move to an, another pivot block and continue downloading at this height. And so on until you have downloaded all the state. Uh, but the problem is now you have a patchwork of different revisions. So if you compute the, the root hash for this tree, you will get something completely invalid. So what you have to do is uh, go into the next phase, which is called healing. Um, and you have to find a node that is synced uh, to the network, and you have to ask them uh, for an updated version. And uh, so you, you bisect the tree. To, you try to find where the data you have is too, is too old compared to the, to the version they have. And then they respond with the updated, like uh, an updated range of, of values. And they provide you with a proof that this uh, range of value is correct. And so you update. But it's not as simple, of course, because while you do all this dancing of exchanging proofs, the state keeps being updated. And so uh, the, the point is that you hope that you can perform this dance fast enough that at some point you will catch up with the head. So that's it for uh, SnapSync. Now I want to talk about The Verge, which is a new item on the roadmap. And it's basically about enabling stateless clients. So I will get, uh, uh, I will get back to this in a, in a bit. But the first step of The Verge is to enable, to switch the, 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 tru the structure that, the, that is used to store the Ethereum state from the Merkle Patricia tree into a new structure called the Verkle trees. And why do we want to do this? Well, basically, because vertical trees enable for smaller proofs. And as a result, we can uh, add, uh, we can take the, the stage, uh, sorry, the state that we just, just the state that we need uh, to execute a block, no more, no less, add some proof uh, that this is correct, package it in a block, and the block doesn't get too large. So it's, uh, it's realistic to to uh, forward those blocks around the network, transmit those bl uh, blocks around the networks, the network. And the advantage, uh, sorry, um, the, the advantage of this approach is that you can even see the block as a self-contained execution entity. So you do not need any of the state. Basically, you no longer need to sync if you want to be a, a stateless node. 
So uh, to achieve that, there's a few changes. There's basically we change the whole cryptography, but we also change we simplify the tree structure. So one thing we do is we instead of having like like we do currently account trees and then each account that has storage has another tree that you have to open to to read the the data. Uh, everything gets uh, merged into a single tree. We only have 32 bytes uh, leaves, so um, yeah, instead of having more complex objects like an account, if you want to access the nonce of an account, it will be in a single 32-byte uh, leaf somewhere in the, in the tree. If you want the, uh, the balance, it's another leaf, and so on. Um, right, and detailing a bit the, the proof uh, in block, we not only want to put the data that, is, uh, that you need to re-execute the block, but also add all the updates that will, be, uh, that will be added to the state by the block execution. So this way, if you're really lazy, if you want to have a really light client, you don't even need to execute uh, the, the block. You can just update your own state and uh, accumulate the data this way. And of course, we package some uh, cryptographic magic to, to guarantee that this, uh, this, all this data is valid. Um, yeah, so you can, this way you can build what I call a stateless view. So you have a larger tree, but you only see uh, one portion of the tree, so only the leaves you're interested in and the path to them, but everything else that you don't need to execute the block, it's uh, not, just not given to you. You don't need to store it. You, you don't need to ask for it. Uh, so that's pretty, that's pretty cool. And that enables stateless clients, of course, uh, clients that will just execute those blocks but not, uh, not uh, save any state. But it also enables it makes uh, other applications easier, like for example sharding. If you have, let's say, 64 shards uh, and you don't have statelessness, you need to monitor 64 chains. So the state is growing. So if you're a validator, because you can be shuffled between any shard, it's uh, yeah, you, you just have to keep uh, track of every chain. If you have a stateless client, if your validator is a stateless client, you can just join a new shard because you've been asked to validate on it. You verify the block. And uh, yeah, thank you, goodbye, I'm going on to my next shard. And of course, and that's what we're interested in, you can also use these techniques to simplify the, the sync. Um, so ideally, there's an ideal version of the vertical sync, which is just uh, when, you, when you join the network, you, can, you, you check the block, you reconstruct the tree from the proof, and then at the next block, you accumulate more data. But of course, uh, there are some accounts that don't get touched for years, so you're missing them. So one technique would be to go and backfill all that data from, uh, from a stateful node. And this way, you could have a full sync. But uh, it has the, it's interesting because you can already join the network without having downloaded all the, the data. So you can already do some validation. You can't do block production, but you can uh, at least do validation this way. And uh, so that's, a, that's fine and dandy, but it's a new sync algorithm. The problem with sync algorithm is that they take a long time to develop. So uh, what we did in the meantime, we, have, uh, we already have SnapSync. And SnapSync relies on proofs, which is great, because that's what Verkle is good at. And uh, now I'm going to hand it over to Tanishk. He's going to explain the midterm plan. So uh, vocal sync works pretty much similar to how SnapSync does. Uh, most of the primitives that SnapSync use, vocal sync uses them, just implements them differently. Uh, there are two stages in vocal sync, as we discussed in SnapSync, like range sync and healing. So the idea is that as you sync download ranges from the network, the chain moves forward, and you have some inconsistent data. And there, that's where healing comes in. So you can heal the tree and get a consistent view of the entire state of the entire tree at one particular block. So let's see how this happens in vocal sync. Uh, first, let's revisit the structure of vocal tree. So in vocal tree, the key is 32 bytes, but the leaves are RLP encoded accounts. So there is no specific restriction on the size of the leaves. You can just RLP encode the entire account and use that as a leaf. But in vocal trees, we have specifically 32 byte leaves. And as you can see in the structure, so it starts with internal nodes, and then there is a extension suffix tree at the end. And each extension suffix tree contains 256 leaves. And the key of vocal tree is also 32 bytes. So first, 31 bytes are used to traverse down the internal nodes. And then the last byte is basically used to address the individual leaves in the extension suffix tree. So now, 
In Merkle tree, what we used to do was, when we do the range sync, we used to fetch the range of accounts, and then like uh, insert into the tree and create the entire tree. But in vocal trees, instead of using individual leaves, we stick with the entire extension suffix tree. We serve the entire extension suffix tree as one uh, blob of an object. The reason for this is because, like as Guillaume said, snap sync is mostly based on proofs, and so is vocal sync. And while you request any kind of range from the network, there is a significant amount of data and bandwidth that is being used by proofs. So this serving the entire suffix tree as one object is basically done to reduce the size of those proofs. Hence, you'll have to download less data from network. Hence, yet, yeah, you can make it a bit faster. Yeah. Now let's look how the sync algorithms work. It's, again, similar to snap sync, you start with an empty tree. You st let's say you start at a block A. Then you start downloading something, and you reach at some block A plus N. And you have downloaded some part of the tree. Now it's good till the time the A plus N, the N is less than 128, because the limitation with snap and vocal sync is that the nodes only store the data or the data they need to serve the ranges for the last 128 blocks. So as you are syncing, and if the block moves more than 128 blocks, the chain moves more than 128 blocks, you cannot get the data you are trying to get for the block A. So the only thing now you can do is basically move your pivot, that was block A, to block B. But that creates a problem that the data you already downloaded was changed while the, changed while the chain moved from block A to block B. And that part of the data is not consistent with what you want at block B. In snap sync, initially we do not care about this. We complete the ranges download phase. And at the end, we start the healing process, where we start at the root node and traverse down and find if there is an inconsistent node. We query the network, and we get the correct node. And we repeat again and again till we get the consistent view of the uh, tree at one particular block. But in vocal sync, if you remember, there is another part that is there is some additional data inside the block that are proofs, pre-state, and post-state. So we can effectively use the post-state. So exactly what post-state is that if you execute a block, post-state contains all the key value pairs that were modified, and they have the modified value in the block. So you can directly use the post-state to basically update the tree instead of querying individual nodes from the network. So what you can do is, while you make a pivot shift from block A to block B, you can accumulate all the witnesses or the post-state in the block from block A to block B, combine them, and slices up, slice it up to the range you have completed the thing, and apply those changes uh, to the tree, the half-downloaded tree. And now, basically, what you get is a consistent view of half of the tree, but all the data that you have downloaded as uh, reflects the data at block B. And you can basically repeat this process again and again. Whenever uh, the chain moves more than 128 blocks ahead, you can shift the pivot and similarly apply all the post state. The major advantage of this is, like in SnapSync, you first download everything and then you start the healing process, which is a quite slow because you have to query the network again and again for different nodes that are not there. And in the meantime, the chain is also moving. But here, while shifting the pivot, since you already have the blocks, you already download the blocks in the background, you can just use the data present in the block to update the tree and then start the ranges process. So it makes the healing process much, much, much faster than what's currently in SnapSync in Merkle trees. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it for Merkle thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have to. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Hi, thank you for the talk. Great talk. Uh, so, um, I have a question. Uh, so, you mentioned that, okay, in the vertical sync, we have the proofs of state transitions basically inside the blocks. Yep. But also, on one of the slides, you showed like this is the view at the block, and these are all the nodes that are necessary for execution, if I yep. heard you correctly. So, like, I can't reconcile this in my mind because, like, why do we care what's needed for execution if we don't execute because we have the proof? Uh, sorry, I didn't get the last bit. Uh, so, the view at block like A or whatever mm -hmm. consists only of the um, of the nodes of the tree that are necessary for execution, right? 
but uh, like I don't fully understand why do we have to execute whereas we have the proofs of state transition to the next state so we can just apply the proof and don't execute anything or am I missing something? Right, so uh, it's a bit more complex than this. You don't necessarily need the, the there's no proof of execution itself. Not currently, because uh, I, I didn't get too much into the Verge uh, roadmap, but the idea is that in the end, the, uh, everything will be a ZK, Z, uh, ZK snarked. So then you will have the proof of execution. Currently, you just have the proof of the state. Uh, so you, you get a proof that you can reconstruct the tree in a way that, uh, um, that yeah, uh, in a way that will not cause the block execution to request a node that you don't have. And then you can verify that the post state corresponds to what you've got. But the execution itself is not currently proven. So you, if you, uh, either you trust that the post state is correct, or you execute the block yourself. That comes, uh, like the proof of execution comes later. Hey, thanks for the, uh, for the talk. I wanted to ask something. You said something about um, allowing stateless Ethereum, but also this, this data structure allows us to prove things much faster as well, right? For um, things like what Herodotus does or Axiom or Lagrange, proving things about historic, um, it should allow it for faster proving, right? Uh, no, uh, I mean, okay, yes it should, but we're, we're, uh, currently the proof is, is pretty slow. So it's not going to, pr ah, no, okay, I get it. Uh, you mean the healing phase, yes. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, yes. So actually that was, that was your I'm point. I'm just trying to, I wanna, because you said also stateless. So if, we, if we're stateless, then we cannot prove things that, like, how, what's, just no, tie no. them together. Just, um. S some nodes are stateless, others are stateful. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, it's possibly a slightly personal question, but, like, you guys work on this stuff all the time, right, and your heads are very deep buried into this kind of subject, and it's clear from your talk that it's going to be you know, cool changes coming. Um, I just wondered what, when you think about use cases that get enabled by the changes that are, are gonna come, like, can you share something about, like, what you think about in terms of, like, your favorite use case for this? Uh, I think... It's not a personal question. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, fav uh, the best use case right now is that, uh, as Guillaume mentioned, that it enables stateless clients. So right now, if you want to uh, interact with the blockchain uh, for using wallet or anything else. You have to, if you want to like uh, do it in the most decentralized way possible, you have to sync the entire node that requires a huge amount of disk space and things like that. But when wo the verge is enabled and you have stateless clients, you do not need to download the entire state. You can just sync the headers. And since each block already has all the state you need to execute those blocks, so you can verify the entire chain statelessly. So if you want to interact with the chain, you can just use a stateless client, and you can basically, yeah, interact with the chain. You don't need to download the entire state. So yeah, that's one use case that this enables. Yeah, thank you. And so, sorry, uh, just if I, if I may add, uh, one thing that I could, uh, like something a bit more high level, would be uh, following the, uh, the network on your phone. That's the, like you have a, a mobile phone. You could, like, you could just follow it. That, that's the end goal. I'm not promising it's happening this year, but uh, that's, that's what we're shooting for. Yeah, thank you. So uh, will this be like MENA protocol, where uh, at any block you can verify that uh, with, with ZK proof that uh, this, uh, this block and this data is, is accurate, and then you can use it all on your mobile or whatever? So I'm linking it to MENA protocol. Is, is my linking correct? What's the differences, uh, or is it very much aligned with that. Thank you. Um, didn't quite hear, did you? The MENA protocol, I think. Was so, yeah, I, I know it's about the MENA protocol, but sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't hear the question very well. Yeah, M MENA protocol, do you, do you know about it? I know about it, yeah, I'm not an expert, clearly. Okay, so uh, what I hear, uh, I could link it, it's exactly somehow the same as what MENA protocol is providing. Okay. Is it the same as I, what I understood or not? It's different, thank you. Uh, yeah. I'm, not sure we can answer this question because we don't really know Mina, but uh, yeah, uh, maybe we can talk about this uh, after the, like discuss what we do and uh, I can provide you a, a more deeper answer. 
Yeah, I have a second question, if I may. Uh, so I'm just thinking, okay, this uh, two-step uh, syncing where we sync uh, and then we heal, how bad would it be, theoretically, if we like, choose one pivot block, synced the state as per this block, and then execute everything what follows? Like, what, what's the downside to that? As, yeah. no, please. So there's no downside to that, per se, but the problem is that if you want to do that, then the nodes that are serving you the data for the sync they need to keep track of a lot of blocks. Like for the entire time you need to complete the sync. But right now we only keep track of just 128 blocks. So he, the pivot shift is not because it's probably slow to sync at one block, it's because the nodes only keep the data for 128 blocks. And you need more time than 128 blocks to actually sync the entire state. Yeah. Actually we have one more. When for a cool, uh, when for a cool coin. <laughs> Uh, well, so this is a general vertical tree question, but one nice thing about Merkle trees is they're easy to verify on chain. Um, they're cost effective, fairly cost effective. Um, uh, can you verify vertical trees, uh, vertical tree proofs on chain cost effectively? Uh, probably not. <laughs> not, not currently for sure. Uh, because it needs some pretty heavy cryptography, so a, a smart contract. Like we don't, we clearly don't have a smart contract that. Uh, uh, I mean, we don't even have a precompile. I meant sorry that uh, would be able to verify the the, the elliptic curve. Like the, the elliptic curve is uh, that we're using is is pretty new. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's a realistic goal at this point that uh, that we would be able to do this. Uh, it might be in the long run. It might be easier to. Uh, to, if, we, if, if we had a precompile, we might actually make it easier to, to verify the proof, but currently all the, this uh, cryptography is based on elliptic curves, so it's way slower and way more expensive than uh, using Ketchak, for example. One more quick question. Uh, it's just for the stream. <laughs> is the curve uh, snark friendly? Yes, it's been designed to be snark friendly, although we don't have a circuit for it yet. Cool. Any other pressing questions? <laughs> <laughs> Not super pressing, but we tried to figure out the timeline, like when is the Verge actually coming to Ethereum, right? Like there was some documentation that it's starting with Shanghai, some gas changes in Shanghai plus one and Shanghai plus two. Mm -hmm. Is that still realistic, or how is the timeline there? Tomorrow? <laughs> uh, no, no. I mean, okay, maybe you want to. You, you've got the more pessimistic view on the thing. So. Uh, like, I think there's a 80% chance that we ship it in Prague. Yeah, but still there's a 20% chance that it moves to the next hard fork. That's my view. I mean, but that's I think the plus two. That's awesome still, so that's, <laughs> I'm happy with that. So uh, just to give some uh, extra info, we uh, have the problem. We, we didn't talk about this in this presentation. Uh, but we have to convert all the state. That takes a lot of time. The more we wait, the more state there is to convert, so the longer the conversion lasts. Uh, so it would be very useful if we could do it as, I mean, it, it would be useful to do it as soon as possible, basically. But of course, we don't want to break anything. Just a quick follow-up. Um, a year ago, I tried looking up how vertical trees work, and uh, I couldn't find anything kind of stable. And half a year ago, it was the same. Yeah. Is there some kind of final spec that's kind of user-friendly? Uh, yeah, I just have to write it. <laughs> So how, how to read up on vertical trees? Uh, so there's an EIP. Uh, th there's a couple documents scattered. I just need to clean them up. It's on my to-do list. Uh, but yeah, there's an EIP. So if you want to oh, so if you want to learn about vertical tree, you can uh, I point you to vertical.info. Uh, that will give you a lot of information, uh, like links to to other uh, places. Thanks. Mm. All right. Did you have a question? Okay. Is it, could it be quick? It <laughs> <laughs> All right, hi. Um, I just have a quick question. Are the uh, light client nodes there, which become like stateless, um, what type of uh, operations they are able to do since they drop everything else but pre-state and um, 
post-state execution? Well, they're able to do two things, really. Verification, like attesting to blocks, and uh, also accumulating state over time. Uh, from that, you can already do a couple things, but um, any other idea? Uh, like if you think about PBS, then they can probably produce blocks also? Right. If you use PBS, you could produce blocks. Yeah. True. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's true.